The Nike Pegasus Trail is on its fourth iteration, with this Gore-Tex variant boasting waterproofing along with a durable, grippy outsole. But does this shoe actually keep your feet dry on those rainy or snowy runs? And is this outsole as durable as they claim? At over 100 miles on both road and trail, in these Nike Pegasus 4 GTX, I can say that I've figured out where these shoes work best. Hey crew, today we're going to be digging into this, the Gore-Tex variant of the Nike Pegasus Trail 4. I've been running in a whole host of late winter and early spring conditions in this shoe. While wearing these, I've experienced freezing, snowy conditions, sometimes several feet deep, wet, rainy roads and trails, all the way to warm and dry early spring runs. At well over 100 miles, in these shoes so far. I'm confident that I've figured out where these shoes work best and what makes them stand out. Also, make sure you stay to the end of the video where I'll cover a few shortcomings that I've discovered with these shoes. First, a little bit about myself. I'm an ultra runner and trail run leader with the Vancouver Running Company. As a disclaimer, these shoes were provided to me by Nike. However, I am not being paid for this review and I'm under no obligation to say anything either positive or negative. No one will have a chance to review my footage before it is posted and all opinions are my own. With that out of the way, let's dive in to see what makes this shoe stand out. My initial impressions about this shoe were not that remarkable. My first runs were across drier roads and trail and I developed some gripes about the tread pattern, specifically uh, towards the rear of the shoe but we'll get back to that later. It wasn't until the weather took a turn for the worst when we started getting hit with round after round of rain and snow before I really started to appreciate these shoes. The Gore-Tex upper really shines in these wet, rainy and snowy conditions. Run after run, I was coming back with warm and dry feet where in most other shoes, I'd be coming back wet and soggy. If you're finding this video helpful, consider giving it a like as it really helps the channel grow and subscribe for more trail running content. Even in previous pairs of Nike Pegasus Shields that I've owned, the Gore-Tex Upper and the Peg Trails outperformed them immensely and were way better in those conditions. Let's head up to the snow line to show you what I mean. That ought to solve our traction problem. Let's keep going. Contrary to what you might think, my feet are actually quite dry. The sock-like upper that is super annoying on the trails in providing lack of support is actually keeping all the chunks of snow and ice from going down into the shoe. It's actually quite impressive. And the lack of traction with the lugs doesn't really matter in the snow because I just threw spikes on anyways. So the two big problems with this shoe are essentially gone once you climb up the mountains and cross into the snow line. My feet are still quite warm. The Gore-Tex is definitely doing its job keeping them dry and insulated from all this weather. Definitely not my fastest time up the mountain today with all this snow, but you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. We're going to embrace the snow today. Yeah. 
Moving on. The rubber outsole on the forefoot for the front half of the shoe have been great. I've noticed grippy traction on larger rocks, both wet or dry. And I found this to be a shoe that is good for mixed terrain runs where you're spending half your time on the road, half your time on the trails. That being said, I've been impressed with what these shoes can handle on the rugged mountain bike trails of North Vancouver. They definitely exceeded my expectations up there. The wraparound outsole on the front of the toe box has come in handy several times. And if anything, judging by the impact marks on my shoe, could have been a little wider. This brings me to the first shortcomings of this shoe. The tread pattern in the heel has been less than ideal on technical terrain with roots or small sharp rocks. I find these long tread bars near the divot in the heel result in instability when rolling over these types of obstacles and smaller terrain hazards. The tread definitely performed well with smaller amounts of surface layer snow. However, once the snow got deeper, I did need to switch to spikes. Going back to the upper, I didn't find this ankle sock especially stable. I had to use the extra set of laces that are provided to get an adequately snug fit. The ankle gaiter worked well for a while. However, it did eventually let some snow and ice in after crashing through the snow for extended periods of time. In more normal conditions, it held up quite fine. So what are my thoughts on the Pegasus 4 Trail GTX? These have definitely become my bad weather running shoes for the season. And I would definitely recommend them for anyone trying to stay warm and dry for their training runs. For my longer long runs, I only opted for these if I knew the conditions were especially wet and cold or snowy. Otherwise, I did opt for other shoes. On warmer days with technical trails, these were not the shoe of choice. Coming in at $160, you are paying $20 more for the Gore-Tex version. However, if the conditions in your area warrant it, it is totally worth it for this added cost to have the waterproofing in your closet for these bad weather days. That's all for the Nike Pegasus 4 Trail GTX. Don't forget to subscribe for more trail running content.